The first three minutes of this video are just as important as the reason why you clicked on this video in the first place. So stick around because you never know what secrets I'm going to share. Thermal performance, the number one most important thing in your gaming laptop. I have based my channel around this fact for over three years now. Beyond that, power limitations, that's a big deal. The driver that's installed on the machine, the proprietary software that may provide a small overclock to your GPU while adjusting the wattage and power limits of the device as well. Maybe dual channel memory, that's huge. But if you were to take the same spec machine in two different chassis, the performance between the two is going to be so small it's not worth going to Reddit to state which one is best. The most important thing is thermal throttling, and then everything else after that matters this much in the grand scheme of heat. When it comes to laptops, that's number one. There's not even a close second, and is why I have based my channel off of this fact for over the last three years. When I review a laptop, I put it through hell, right? I play it for hours and hours and hours and hours, and then I press Alt F9 and I start recording. That is the kind of thermal performance expectation I want to show you because everything else about the performance of the machine is going to perform within margin of error compared to everything else that it would be currently competing with spec for spec. Of course, pending no driver issues, no memory or hardware failures, of course, common sense things like that. What dictates the ultimate performance of your laptop? Thermals. Thermals. And that is what this video is sort of about. I've got a laptop here that does not thermal throttle and it allows maximum fans. I have tested five thermal picks over the last week and a half. We have Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut, Thermal Grizzly Carbonaut, Phobia Nano Grease Extreme, Icy Diamond, and Kingpin KPX. Now there were a few others that I wanted to add to the list, but I ran out of thermal interface material. Sort of a bummer. Now I know what you're thinking. Whoa, Bob, What's the laptop? I am not allowed to share this information with you and here's why. The manufacturer specifically requested that I do not relay that information because the thermal interface material that I'm using is aftermarket and fresh. It is going to perform better than what you have at stock. And what they want to do is just try to eliminate some of the needless RMAs that they would be getting because they saw a Bob of All Trades video where Laptop X was performing much cooler than the Laptop X that they just bought from said company, and they want this company to repaste their product. Do you see their point? Because it really makes a lot of sense to me. So with that said, just enjoy this video, take a look at the differences in thermal paste performance, we'll come to a conclusion at the end, and then we'll have fun in the comment section below. It's just that easy. Welcome to YouTube. Let's proceed. Each thermal paste was heavily abused and ran on the system for several days before testing. The laptop settings were maximum fan under maximum wattage. The testing environment is Battlefield 5's firing range, full HD, DX11, ultra settings at a 90 degree field of view, ambient temperature of 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius. Each test ran for a minimum of 60 minutes. First up, Thermo Grizzly Cryonaut. Many have found Cryonaut to pump out. That's where the thermal paste squeezes out between the die and the cooler, rendering it useless. I personally have not experienced this. In fact, here's what my last application of Cryonaut looked like, and it was on a laptop for quite a while. It has been my go-to paste for laptops for several years. It's easy to apply and has served me well exceeding 6 months and often 12 months before replaced. Its ease of use combined with solid performance has always made this an easy recommendation for the enthusiast. Moving on, Thermo Grizzly Carbonaut. This solution can work wonders, but has been shown to be sensitive to fitment of the cooler to die contact. This was the only test that I had to go back and adjust the cooler's screws until I achieved proper mounting. This is something that must be done on a per laptop basis and will not carry over to the same laptop equally all of the time. Carbonaut was highly recommended by me when I first showcased this product on an Aero 15 and Mag 15 simultaneously, January 28, 2020. I liked this product then, and I still do today. In fact, I reused the Carbonaut from those laptops after storing the pads for several months. Carbonaut's main benefit is longevity, making them perfect for laptops providing proper fitment can be achieved. Next, Phobia Nano Grease Extreme. This thicker paste is harder to apply than Cryonaut, but performs very well. 
Some find it superior in situations where the cooler to die contact is not perfect. Under hardware load, this pace took a bit longer to heat up versus Cryonaut, perhaps ideal for benchmarkers who base their laptop's thermal performance after a single time spy run. Overall, I really like this pace for not only its thermal performance, but a lesser temperature spiking during use. In other words, it was very consistent. Next up, Icy Diamond. This pace is one of the thicker solutions and will most definitely score the copper and die. It's abrasive and will polish copper to a shine if applied and cleaned a few times. Trust me, I have more experience with this pace since I previously have over 200 desktop builds under my belt. This was my go-to for about five years. This thermal paste is still good today and does a good job of filling the uneven sections of poorly aligned cooling solution, but Phobia does this just as well, doesn't scar the dye or copper when wiped clean. It's abrasive, but does not negatively affect the hardware over time. And finally, the Kingpin KPX. This is the most expensive paste in today's test. It cost me nearly $12 for a 1.5 gram tube. That's good for about two to three laptops if you know what you're doing. I used this last, just in case I liked it, since I didn't want to remove this to proceed with testing for today's video. Thermal performance here exceeded my expectations, coming in at about 4 degrees cooler than some of the top contenders shown here today. Alright, so let's wrap it up. What about the stock thermal performance? The footage was compromised. I put it in my Adobe Suite and it was green! Oh, that was so frustrating. So. It was about two to three degrees warmer than the worst case scenario that you saw here today, making it about seven degrees warmer than Kingpin KPX. When it comes to Kingpin KPX, it looks great. I just don't know how long it's gonna last. In fact, I really don't know a whole lot about this thermal interface material to begin with, right? So what's a safe amount of time for me to come back and tell you, yeah, go for it. I mean, a couple weeks is not gonna cut it unless it gets hot very quickly, then of course I should report back with that. But a safe and reliable amount of time to test thermal paste for its longevity in a laptop, I mean, it's got to be, what, six months, maybe 12 months? That's fair. That's That may not be fair to the enthusiast who's willing to take apart their laptop every other month. But for the average Joe, the kind of person that I tend to represent, that's fair. I think six to 12 months. And therefore, are you going to wait that long before I can reveal that? No, probably not. So just understand that as good as this product looks to be so far, who knows how long it's going to last a few weeks or months down the road. Now that Carbonat, that is the most special stuff because it will last longer than the laptop. It's a great product and I have been using it for about a year now. Not bad, the same pads, I didn't buy new ones. I would just reuse them on several different laptops. What a nice product and manufacturers, you might wanna consider using something like that provided that you have the hardware, the fitment, the cooling solution, everything lines up, that Carbonat could be a really neat solution for you because it's one of those fire and forget type products. Worth considering, in my opinion. But understand that once you go down that rabbit hole and you start taking apart your own laptop and replacing that thermal interface material, you would have obviously voided your warranty. So keep that in mind. Please be careful when doing jobs like this. All right, folks, that's going to do it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I'll have some more information in the description below, as well as the pinned comment. Big surprise. That's the way it always works on my channel. I'm Bob Voltrades, and I'll see you in the next video.